Welcome again. Right now we're at John chapter 19, verses 31 through to the end of the chapter, verse 42. And we're talking about the burial of Yeshua, Jesus. Therefore the Jews, because it was the preparation day, that's the day before Passover, so that the bodies wouldn't remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a special one, asked of Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Why would they break legs? Okay. Well, the thing is, when you're hanging on a cross, it's your legs that really sustain you. Okay. You're hanging there and breaking a person's legs hastens death. Okay. I mean, you can sever the femur for one thing, but another thing too, it just makes it so hard to sustain yourself, to breathe, and to survive much longer once your legs are broken. So they asked Pilate if they could break the legs of these people crucified so that their death would be hastened, so that th this whole thing could be finished before the Sabbath. Verse 32, Therefore the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they didn't break his legs. Now, it's important to understand that these were professionals, okay? They were working for Pilate. They were working for like one of the superpowers of the world at this time, okay? They knew what they were doing. This is what they did, okay? And if they came to Jesus, especially someone like Jesus, okay, they would have to be very, very, very sure that Jesus was dead before they actually pronounced him dead, okay? These people, again, they were professionals. They knew what they were doing. They worked for the rulers at that time. Verse 34, however, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. Why did he pierce the side of Jesus with a spear? Well, this was to ensure, okay, they were sure to begin with. They said that he was already dead, but this was just like double checking, triple checking, quadruple sure to make very, very sure that he was dead. They took a spear, thrust it through his side to make sure that he was dead. It says blood and water came out. Now, those of you who know the book of Genesis, we got Adam. When God wanted to make a wife for him, a bride for him, it says God put Adam to sleep and he opened his side and took out a rib and built his bride through that. So again, Adam, back in the book of Genesis, God put him to sleep and opened his side up, cut his side open to get his bride. Here we have Yeshua, the second Adam. Behold the man. Remember we talked about this just a little while ago. Behold Adam. And, we, and, they, and they thrust the spear through his side. They open his side. It's through these actions that the bride of Christ, the, the, the bride of Messiah, the bride of Mashiach, can come out. So we've got Adam and Jesus that has so much similarity. Adam was put to sleep. God opened his side and used that to bring out his bride. In the same way, Yeshua, Jesus, was put to sleep in death. And his side was opened up and this secured a way for his bride. Verse 35, he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth that you may believe. For these things happened that the scripture might be fulfilled. A bone of him will not be broken. And that is in Exodus chapter 12, verse 46, Numbers chapter 9, verse 12, and Psalm chapter 34, verse 20. A bone of him will not be broken. Like I said before, so much of the Tanakh, so much of the Torah, the law, the, the prophets and the writings speak of Jesus' crucifixion. May I add his resurrection and his second coming. We're going to get to that. It's just, it's going to be amazing. 
Verse 37, another scripture says, They will look on him whom they pierced. That's Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked of Pilate that he might take away Jesus' body. Pilate gave him permission. Now, Joseph of Arimathea must have been not only a very wealthy man, but a very influential man, too, because I don't think that just any old common man could go up before Pilate. He came, therefore, and took away his body. Nicodemus, who at the first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred Roman pounds. And this would be, it says here in the notes, a hundred Roman pounds of 12 ounces each, or about 72 pounds or 33 kilograms. So Nicodemus came by night to bring these spices and these things to help him bomb the body. Can you imagine 30 some odd pounds of these things, myrrh and aloes. That's a lot. Okay, that's a lot. And so Nicodemus actually worked for this. Verse 40, So they took Jesus' body and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Now it's worth mentioning here that today also, just as we talked about before, about the, uh, the seamless robe, also we have the Shroud of Turin which is purportedly the linen cloth that was wrapped around Jesus' body when he was buried. Very interesting to know that still a lot of these relics still exist today. And may I add, there are some people, there are some churches, and some, there are some authorities that do claim they still have the spear that went into his side as well. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. In the garden was a new tomb, in which no man had ever been laid. Then, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the tomb was near at hand, they laid Jesus there. We actually had two places they say that Jesus was born. There was one, there, one place is the garden tomb, which seems to line up with this. Another place is another tomb, which is not too far from that, around which the Church of the Resurrection is built. Now, one thing you should know is that the Orthodox Church that runs the Church of the Resurrection built around the tomb that's supposed to be the tomb of Jesus. You know, every Resurrection Sunday, you got this Orthodox Christian priest that goes into the tomb. And the story goes that there is a supernatural fire that comes and lights a bunch of candles and they start spreading these candles throughout the audience. And there's always thousands of people there. So once again, may God enlighten the eyes of your heart, enlighten the eyes of your understanding to see things you've never seen before and give you great insight into these things as we read the scriptures. And as always, as you call upon him, may he show you great and mighty things.